Yo, Kepe Sky here. Hey, so we are doing Q&A with Kepe Sky. And what that means is I answer all the questions that you guys have asked me in this video. And if you ever want to know how to enter your own question in, if you go to YouTube, whether that's on your phone, using the app or the desktop site, if you do it on your web browser, if you use a computer, you can go to my community tab where I often post every like six months or so a Q&A option for you guys where you can leave me some comments of questions you guys have, home theater, me, whatever you want to ask. So that's what we're going to do today. So we have some pretty good questions. We're going to start off with LA Space Boy 1356 and he has a couple icebreaker questions. He says, one, pick one movie or demo your home theater to the best of its audio ability. Well, it's hard to say, but my go-to seems to always be Ready, Ready Player Run, Tron, or Hacksaw Ridge. I love those, but I have Dolby Atmos demo discs too, so they have some really good clips and different things from them that I love to show off my system with, and I also use it to calibrate my system too. I want to be able to hear what everything is doing. Oh, that's not loud enough. Let me turn this up. That's too loud. Turn this down. So I use demo discs not only to show off my home theater, but to also fix it if there are any problems. Number two, he asks, what two speaker brands would you rock that is the same price range as the Kefs? Canton. I love Canton. I have my first Cantons ever um, about three years ago now or two or close to it. Um, and I love them. And I would buy them again. They're not very popular in America. But hopefully when I had them, I brought some popularity to them. I would buy them again, 100%. And when I was buying my Kefs, I was going between them and Paradigm or... Um, ELAC has some really good high-end stuff too. So those are probably my, my choices. Number three, what's one thing you would change differently or do better in your new home theater setup, if any, not that you've had time to play around, um, now that you have time to play around and contemplate? Um, it's hard to answer that question because I'm still making improvements. So there's, I'm still changing things now. So I don't really know what to, how to answer that question necessarily. Um... But I do know that I would rather not have home theater seats in my home theater. And the reason being is because, yes, my room is small and I, I live alone and you know, my girlfriend comes over. So it's really just us watching movies. But I still would rather have like an L, a sectional couch, an L couch, because you would have at least minimum three or four seats. And it would probably still take up a similar space as far as how I would have it. I would have it pushed against the wall and then a little opening on the right side to walk through. I would probably rather have a couch than a home theater seating because um, you really only get home theater seats for the home for the for the movie theater feel. I rather have a couch and be cozy than to go for an aesthetic. Is kind of my answer to that. Now he asked some question that says it's not home theater related. He says, "What's the best advice given to you in life?" This is not my. I kind of give myself this own advice, and it's not my advice. Everybody's heard this, but. I've been really living by letting go of what you can't control. It's been a really big part of my life the last year or so. When you have something that you can't control, don't try to control it. You will obsess over it. You will, you will lose sleep over it, whatever. When something is out of your hands, let go and let God, and you will, you will be a much happier person. And I've been living that for the last year. Some things happen that in life that sucks. You get an argument with a coworker, your car breaks down, whatever. If you can't control it, then let go of it. Let it go, um, and then things will fall into place naturally. Not, don't forget about it. You still have to be active, proactive, and make things better. But don't try to obsess and control over something you can't control. It just wasn't meant to be that way is, is how I've been thinking lately. So that's that answer. Number two, what would you tell your 18-year-old self? It gets better. That's what I would tell my junior self. Keep going, it gets better. Number three, if you are, if you won a million dollars, what materialistic item would you buy? Uh, I talk about it all the time. If I ever got ripped, you would never know it. I wouldn't wear designer clothes. I would have a fast car, but not the fastest. And I would have a big house, but not the biggest. I would live comfortably. Um, so I guess the only materialistic thing that I would buy is a nicer, uh, is a house materialistic? <laughs> Cause you gotta live there. I'll say car, I will have a nice car It'd be like 200 grand. I wouldn't spend a million dollars on it. Um, you would never know that I'm rich. I would keep my money saved away for emergencies or give it to family or whatever. So number four is pick one job 
um, that you would do and be content? Have all the money I would ever need. What job would I do and be content? Probably YouTube, to be honest with you. My dream is to get enough of a fan base behind me to do YouTube full time. I won't quit working. I'll do a part time job to stay, you know, active and not be bored. But I hope one day that YouTube is my main income and I will be completely happy with that. So that's the goal. So good question. Appreciate you. So Patrick Young, 738, kind of asked a similar question. He says, first of all, congratulations on the move. Thank you, buddy. Your home looks great. My question is, what's your go to movie to show off your home theater? Again, Hacksaw Ridge is always the one I put in. Um, demo discs, I have three Dolby Atmos demo discs, and then I always choose Ready Player One or Tron. Those are like my go-to. I would like to change that. Those are just movies that I'm familiar with. I would love for you guys to give me some suggestions because I would love to have some different ones if I can. So this one is from One More Try. He asks, what did you learn from the mini DSP? What advice would you give someone getting one to use with four subs? Um, what I learned from the DSP, from the mini DSP, is that more subs is, is not better. <laughs> People always say, go dual subs or more because it's better, it's even. That is absolutely untrue because you may get lucky and put four subs in really good spots and get a really positive result. But my philosophy is the more subs you put in the room, the more calibration you better be prepared to do. Because when you start adding subs, multiple subs, or you start adding subs that are too big, you're really gonna have to find some sort of way to calibrate and fix the issues. More is not always better, sometimes less is more, but if you think you want multiple subs, you better have a mini DSP or some sort of calibration tool for your subs so that you can go in and make corrections because you will have to fix your peaks and knolls, balancing, make sure that subs aren't canceling each other. And you may sit down and think, no, my subs are good. Well, I promise you, I absolutely promise you, if you open up a laptop and do some, some calibrating, get a mic and measure your room, what you think is good is only okay. There's probably a step above what you have. And a lot of people don't know that because they haven't you know, had a mini DSP. So that's what it taught me, is that no matter how good you think your system sounds, there is probably a level above it. And if you have multiple subs, you better have a DSP. He also asked, did you upgrade your, uh, your AVM70 to the AK boards? No, I did not because <laughs> I was really upset at the fact that it cost you $500 to upgrade and you pay for shipping to get it there. Um, and that's crazy because you can buy a new AVM70 or 90 or any Anthem product and it now has the AK boards and they're selling it for the price that I bought mine for when I didn't have the AK board. So I'm like, forget that. So, and I don't use AK. I have a projector right now, it's 4K. In the future, I won't upgrade my Anthem to AK. I'll just buy the latest and greatest new processor because when AK becomes you know, prevalent, when when TVs are more 8K, when projectors do 8K, by that time, Anthem's gonna have a whole new processor or somebody is that I'm gonna want that's gonna have 8K already. So I'm not gonna upgrade the Anthem because I'm just gonna upgrade the whole processor in the future. So Jasmine Miller 453 says, is it worth having a dedicated home theater room? What are the pros and cons compared to your apartment home theater? That's a really good question. So is it worth having a dedicated home theater? I think if you're going to use it more than you know once or twice a week yeah if you're not going to use it but once a month i mean i guess it's fine if you're going to have like friends over for you know football season great whatever if you're going to use it it's worth it it's only worth it if you're going to put the time into it the reason why we call it dedicated home theater is because you should plan to take the time to calibrate your system put the speakers in the right place get acoustic treatment, put a rug down on a bare floor, so on and so forth. That's what makes it dedicated. Dedicated doesn't mean you have a room that you watch movies in necessarily. A dedicated home theater means you took the time to make sure that what you have in that room is performing optimally. And I think it's only worth it if you want to put that time into making it something you want to go watch every you know, couple of days or so. So for me, it's been absolutely worth it. Yes, I do YouTube, so it helps the channel out. But two, I go in there and watch TV. I watch movies. I listen to music. I, I do a lot of cool things in that room that I couldn't do before because I now I have dedicated space in a house where nobody else can hear me. So it's awesome. She also asked, what's the pros and cons compared to your apartment home theater? The pro is because it's dedicated, I can do whatever I want. You can't do that in an apartment. And then the obvious, there's other people around me, so I can't even turn my system up. But now I can, and it's amazing. 
Um, one of the cons about having a dedicated home theater is that you kind of isolate yourself away from everybody else. For me, no problem. I live alone, so I don't have family or a girlfriend or whatever living here that I'm ignoring <laughs> when I go in there. It's just me. But I can see like uh, when you have a family and kids or whatever, you may not want your kids touching all your stuff or playing around. Or if you have a dog, you may not want the dog in the theater room. You know, if it's a puppy, it's not potty trained, whatever. You don't want all that mess in your room. And like I said, if you have a family, if you are always in your theater room, you kind of isolate yourself from the family if they're not also into the home theater room. So you kind of separate yourself from the rest of the group. So there could be some cons to that. Not a con for me now, but I can see that being a con in the future. Luckily, uh, my girlfriend does come into the room with me, and she's in there more than I am. So we, we share the space equally, so it's pretty fun. So DJ Derek Rock says, what movie inspired you to get into home theater? Nothing. I'm not sure why I got into home theater. I made one video about, what's 2023? I made a video about 10 years ago about a Blu-ray player that I bought just to do it, right? And you guys actually watched it, so I tried it again. You guys watched that video, and it just it was rinse and repeat. But no movie ever really got me into. I've always been into music, so I've always been into audio systems. Um, back when CDs were a thing, five CD changers with the bookshelf speakers, I always had something like that. But there really wasn't a movie that got me into it, and there really isn't a movie now that keeps me into it. I just love audio and music so much that that's what keeps me a part of this whole hobby. So Pete across the street asks, what's the most cars that you sold in the month? If you don't know, I am a salesperson at Toyota here where I live, and we are a small Toyota. We live, I'm, it's a small town, not a lot of people are here, um, but we do get you know traffic from nearby cities. The most cars that I've sold in the month is 17, which may not sound a lot to you guys, but on average, the, even our 10, 15, 25 year salespeople sell about 20 or 25. I've been there for three and a half years now. So I sold 17 at the most, which is a really high number for our dealerships. Um, big dealerships, 17 to me is like 30 or 30 or 40 to them. So not a bad number. It was a really good month that month. <laughs> so user i 4 zo says, what or where did you get your projector screen? How much was it? Um, how did you get it on the wall? So my projector screen was free to me because they sent it out to review. It was from Elite Screens. It's 103 inches and they give you brackets to mount on the wall and you can slightly slide them if you need to. Me personally, I don't use brackets on my screen because um, I change screens often for reviews and not all the brackets are universal. So I just actually have my screen hanging up by one single nail on the wall like a picture frame and it's perfect. So it limits holes in the wall. So when I'm changing screens, I'm not always making a new hole. So that's just me. You probably don't want to do that. <laughs> um, how I, there you go. Just that, oh yeah. So protected screen, where did I get it? I got it sent to me from lead screens. How much was it? Uh, I think it was $800. If you buy one yourself and then how I got on the wall is with one little nail. Um, LA space boy also has another question it says how, or I have an Emotiva RMC one L and if I, had to do it all over again, I would get an Anthem AVM70. Um, but should you get an Anthem AVM70 or the 90? Uh, I would get the 90 because it has two extra channels for the subwoofer and they are all dedicated. So for me, currently I'm running two subs and if I ever wanted to add more, I have to do a Y splitter. And that means that whatever I connect to that Y splitter, the subs will be treated as one. So I can't separate them without a mini DSP. I would personally go for the 90 um, if you're running multiple subs. I'm not anymore, I'm only running two. The 70 is perfect for my needs. And if I wanna add more, I can just get a mini DSP and control them that way. I think overall the, the AVM70 is probably the better bang for your buck. I know there's other features besides the extra two dedicated subwoofer channels, um, there's more processing as well, but ADM 70 is probably good for 85, 90% of people out there, including myself. All right. So the OpZone 6775 ask, so, okay, so I am working towards a 7.1 using a PC motherboard X57 crosshair. Uh, I think I can't remember that number extreme, <laughs> which supports that. I think that's eight. Is that number eight? I can't remember seven. I can't remember. Anyway, which supports that 7.1? I am thinking of running it through a receiver. I have a 5.1.2 setup using the Yamaha RX A2A in my living room. Since I already have a Yamaha and happy with it, I just will stay with the Yamaha for the 7.1 for the basement setup. I guess the question, had you have any experience with PC round setups? No, I have not. 
and I'm not sure how popular they are anymore. I know when I was a little bit younger, I saw a lot of people using them, um, but I'm not really sure PC home theaters. Um, but you let me know when you get everything set up, how has it been for you? And you tell us, I want to know. And if you are familiar with subscriber showcase, I want you to enter in your setup to subscriber showcase so we can see what you're doing with it because there's not a lot of people in the space doing that. It'd be really cool to see. Brick7244 says, um, wait, what? Why the red X over the Anthem, which I think you own, and the green mark over the Emotiva? So my thumbnail back in the day when I did my first Q&A, I put an X over Anthem ABM70 and a check mark over the RMC1 from Emotiva. They're both processors. It was clickbait. Buy a ABM70, don't buy the Emotiva. Moving on. <laughs> Last question from Christian645. Are you going to buy Emotiva? I've had Emotiva before. I've had two different types of amplifiers from them, but I've never heard or had their speakers, and I've never used any of their processors. Um, I would like to at least audition them, but I don't see them replacing anything that I have currently. I do think the Base X line of amplifiers is a true bang for your buck. If you're looking for good, clean power for as little money as possible, there are some options out there, but Emotiva would be on my my top priority list because like I said I've had them before but I don't plan on putting them back in my system I don't plan on really changing much in my system as far as the components goes for a while because they're just that good so hope that answers your question all right so we're out of questions but I do remember one question somebody asked me in a comment on the video and they asked me do you hear a difference between your monoprice monolith 7 amplifier and your osd audio amplifier do you hear a difference when you're using them and i told him absolutely not and that doesn't just go between the monoprice and the osd audio but that goes for almost all amplifiers it's, you don't really buy an amplifier in a home theater to change your sound you really buy an amplifier to get the best performance out of your speakers and if you have a receiver then you relieve some of the stress on your receiver. So when I'm buying an amplifier, I'm not buying one just to change the sound, or maybe I want more bass, or I want more high end. I don't think like that at all when I'm buying an amplifier. What I do is I look for um, the number of outputs, seven channels, five, whatever, 11. That's step number one, make sure that it meets my speaker's needs as far as the number of speakers it can power. Number two is the Trotto Transformer. How big is the Trotto Transformer? Basically, that's a, a power plant. The bigger it is, usually the more power it can give, and it may be able to give more power than rated. So I like headroom. So for example, my Monoprice Monolith gives me, it's like 200 watts times seven at eight ohms. My speakers are four ohms at best, and they, I think my Monoprice gives me almost 100 or 150 watts more at four ohms. So it's rated to handle speakers between four and eight ohms. It has a lot of power even at eight ohms. Um, and it's a huge power plant. It's, it's great. The build quality is phenomenal. The binding post, the part where you plug your speakers to, is phenomenal. It has XLR inputs and RCA inputs, so I have options and flexibility there. So that's what I look for in an amplifier. Does it power my speakers at the correct impedance? Does it have a strong power plant? Does it have a good build quality? If it does, it's a good chance that it has, uh, or that it's a really good amplifier. But there are a lot of good amplifiers out there, and it's not really a sound difference, it's more of a, a capability difference. So no, I don't hear a difference between my two amplifiers, but I do use them for two different things. My monolith powers my bed layer speakers, the floor speakers, and then my OSD powers my four Atmos speakers. So. That's how I feel about that. But I'm going to end the video there. Happy holidays. Stay tuned later on today. I will be making another video of my amp rack that I just built in my home. I'm excited to show you guys that, so stay tuned for that video. Stay tuned on the community page for the next Q&A that I do. If you want to see other questions and answers that I've done, I do have a playlist called Q&A with k Guy. There's been some really good questions in these videos. If you guys want to ask your own, stay tuned for the next time that I post. Of course, I'll answer some in the comments as well. Again, happy holidays. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not already. And we will see you in the next video. k Guy out. Peace.